So before I get going here, I'd like to apologize for the audio and video quality. I'm not at home, I'm actually traveling, but I still wanna get the video out. And so the mic I'm using is the built-in mic on the laptop and the screen size, that's all I have to work with. So hopefully it isn't too bad. So that's why things might look different than other videos. Well, because I'm just working out my laptop alone. Hello everyone, welcome back to Coding with Veral. And today we're diving right into episode six of our low code development with App Smith. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when I publish new videos. In our previous episode, we learned how to create responsive layout, fetch data from API, build dynamic lists, and much more. If you haven't watched them yet, I highly recommend checking out episode one to five to get caught up. Now, let's talk about today's agenda. In this episode, we're going to beef up the security of our application by implementing these key features protected web pages and redirect. We'll learn how to restrict access to specific places so that only authenticated users can view them. Sign out and store cleanup. I will show you how to create a sign out functionality that also clear the user's data from local storage. Securing our item listing page. We'll enhance the security of our item list page by adding authentication checks before displaying data. Finally, we'll be creating our own page. This will be used as a landing place to welcome user, and of course, we'll be securing it. Remember, these features are crucial for creating a robust user-friendly application. First up, we will dive into implementing protected pages and redirects. Let's jump in. So let's start coding. So here I am in my VS Code directory. Um, you can see I have an episode six directory, which I will visit. The first thing I want to do is remove the um, account signup page that we have, because we don't need that anymore. So we can remove that. And then I want to work on the items list page. We want to secure this page. What we want is that since we're storing information from, on our login page, our sign-in page, you know, about the user and so on, we want that on our account listing page to check if we have a valid JWT. If we have a JWT stored in our local store, then the user already authenticated and we can let them see this item listing. If we don't have a JWT, then we should not show them the item listing page. We should redirect them to go log in. So if we look at our code here, basically what we want to do is to confirm that they're signed in. And that's pretty simple. We want to say if the store doesn't contain the JWT, navigate to the authentication page. And so if we go here to our item list page and we create a JavaScript object, and we implement the same function that I just showed, and basically to say, hey, if the JWT that's stored in App Store is null or not valid in it, essentially, then we should navigate away. Otherwise, don't do anything. Um, so now, um, oh, this didn't work because I made a mistake. So let's go back to the JWT, call the navigate to function that's built in to App Smith. And now you can see. The problem is we usually call these function from a, an element, but now we want this function to be executed on page load. So AppSmith allows you to um, have queries and function be executed on page load. And so we go to the settings on the JavaScript object page and for this particular function, we want it to um, execute on page load. So we set it to run on page load. And so now every time this page is open, it's gonna be loaded. Now here's some more information about how this works. If you go to the AppSmith documentation and you go to concepts and you read about how JWT, about the JavaScript object, the queries and widgets. And basically it's gonna tell you for the JavaScript object that you can create functions that you can use across your application. Now, this across your application is a little misleading, but I noticed that though from one page to another, you can't really call functions that is defined on one page, but anyway, um, the important thing here is that you can write function and it talks about this um, running functions on the page load. So now if we were to run our application and um, see if we can navigate between this page, you can see it. So yeah, we run the page and we're seeing the item listed, which means we're already authenticated. And we can see this by going to the page and going back to the items page. As we navigate between these two pages, we're getting to see our org page. And so if we go to our developers tool and we look in the local store for this application and we go down to AppSmith, AppSmith um, 
key. So there, there's a document containing you know, information about Mary and of course the JWT. So if we clear that out, delete it, and we then try again, we should expect that oh, we shouldn't be able to go to this page, but it's still working. So what is going on here? So let's go back to our implementation and we're going to try something. Now, if we go and we check that variable, that um, value is not in the store. Like we don't have a app submit key anymore. So we did successfully delete it. So what is happening? So somehow the JWT is cached somewhere, most likely in the browser. And the reason why, the reason I know this is if we go back and we edit our code and we insert a console before we do the if statement, and we say, okay, let's write out the JWT and whatever value it is using the console log um, function. And then now if we rerun it and we go look at the console output. So again, we go to developers tool and this time we're going to click on the consoles tab instead of the application tab. If we navigate between the pages, you'll see there is the JWT. So while the JWT is not in the application local store, it is cached somewhere. So I'm thinking it's cached in the browser. Um, so what we want now? So we know how to navigate if we're not authenticated, but we have to make sure that the user could log out. And when they log out, we want to clear the store. So let's add a menu button and then add some items in that menu. And one of them is going to be to be able to log out. So we're going to do search for menu button, drop it here at the top of this page, and we'll quickly modify it so that it basically includes like the username, the current that we're using name at the top of the menu. Remember, if the user is not logged in, they're not going to come to this page anyway, so that's okay. Um, and so we use the user full name. And so we should see Marianne. And then we want to change our menu items. Let's change First, change our button to be a tertiary button. I don't think it needs to be a primary. Um, the next thing I want to do is change the menu items. So let's go back to the content for the menu, and then let's replace all these menu items with things that make sense. So anything you think the user might need is from this thing. So I took inspiration for this menu from um, Amazon. So if you go to the Amazon page, you sign into Amazon, you'll see your name, you click on your name, and then you see things like sign out, um, addresses, order history, all this other stuff. So essentially it's the same idea. Okay, let's think about sign out. So for sign out, we want to be able to um, execute a JavaScript function. So let's write that function that's going to do the sign out. And we want to put that, of course, in our JavaScript object. So let's add a function here and we'll call it do sign out. Not very creative, but it works. You can try out, call it anything you like. But what does do sign out really do? <laughs> Pardon the, the pun. Um, what it does is just simply clear the store. And that means it gets rid of everything that we have there. No. Um, I'm going to say if the user is going to sign out, we should just remove clearly the entire store and don't be picky about what we're removing from the store. So, and nav navigate to the authentication page. So, we have clear store um, function here provided by AppSmith. So, that's going to clear the store. And then we have the navigate to function, which we used before. And we can say navigate to the auth page, which is the name of the page. And that's it, just these two lines alone. Let's make sure that our, our sign out menu item executes this function. So, it goes to the JavaScript option and do the JavaScript object and does call the sign to sign out. And that's it. So now we can go run this code and see what happens. So here's our menu. We click sign out. Notice we navigate to the sign in page. If we try to then go to the item list page, notice how it's refusing to go there. And we can see this is actually trying to execute that function. If we go to the developer tool again, and let's just clear our console here. And let's try to go to the item listing page. You can see just now you saw the log line that says JWT and it says undefined. That's because, yeah, it's undefined because we cleared it. And so we can no longer go to this page anymore. This is a bit annoying though with um, App Smith is that even in development mode, when you're editing the page or page edit mode, you still can navigate to this page if you're not signed in. So you notice there, which I just click signed in and now I can navigate to the page. Um, no. While I'm in edits here, you would think that, oh, I should be able to go to the item list page, but no, it doesn't work. So that's it for the item list page. We have it protected with the ability to check if a user is authenticated and also to be able to sign out from this page. 
So next thing is what happened when we sign in? Well, we need to navigate to some page after sign in. So for now, let's say that when you sign in, you go to the item list page. And so after we finish um, validating that the user can sign in and storing their information, um, let's now navigate to the item list page. And now when we run this and we, um, let's see, we're currently signed in, let's sign out. Then we click the sign in button, we sign in and notice how we get navigated to the item list page. That is exactly what we want. And then now um, click on a username, we can sign out again if we want and back and forth. So this works. All right. So if you're happy with this, then you're done. However, if you want, you can create like a home page. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a home page and say, well, when we sign in, we should go to the home page. So what are you going to put on the home page? Well, it could be anything you want. Like you can welcome the user, you can show them their current um, order status, all that sort of thing. It's like a landing page. So notice how I can set that this is the home page. This is for navigation purposes. This is when you actually deploy the AppSmith application, which is the first page it's going to try to show. And so we're going to do the same thing that we did for our um, basically our item list page. And that is, let's copy our menu um, from the item list page and put it on the home page. And that's because we want both of these pages, once you're signing these protected pages, to have the same set of options props possibly, at least signing out. Now, we can change it so that not every page has the same menu item, but for now, let's just copy and paste the same thing. And we can see from the home page JavaScript object that, yeah, the code is just what we've written already. So let's just copy and paste the code on the home page JavaScript object. And now we can see that if we go and update our sign out button to make sure it's, all, it's calling this do sign out, which it is because the JavaScript object is called the same thing. Um, now we have the same functionality on our own page. Now, we should definitely make sure that our confirm sign in is run on page load because we want the same thing to protect this own page. We don't want users to be able to access this own page unless they are signed in. The other thing we can do is we can hide certain page from the navigation tab. And so notice here our page is already set to be the, um, the own page, but you can change whether it's shown in navigation. And so when you are running the app, notice all those pages are shown there as tabs and you can just easily check them, select them, but we don't want them. Um, that's because we're going to use authentication to select which page we want to show. So our, our page, we shouldn't show it in the navigation. If we do want to show our own page, well, we have a way to enforce, you know, going to log in if you're not authenticated. So this is up to you. And now, if we run our application, we can see that, well, we didn't update it so that when you sign in, you go to the home page. So it's still going to the, um, the item list page. So let's change this so that uh, when you sign in, you go to the home page. And so now if we were to run our application now and test it, we'll see that we actually go to the home page. So one of the things I want to do on the home page, let's just put um, something interesting. So we can, we're not going to spend too much time making the home page like really nice. Like I said, it's just a welcome page essentially. So what we can do is um, do something like show the number of items in your cart. Maybe you were working on a cart before. And so we can show many items in that cart. And um, we can probably use a button for this and show the last order status, whether it's being processed, it's shipped, it's delivered, that sort of thing. You can also show the number of items in a cart. Um, you can show uh, promotion. So all these are number of things that you can do on the home page. So I'm not trying to build out a home page. I'm really just trying to show you the tools you can use to build application and just using like the e-commerce thing as an example. But it's up to you what you want to build. Okay. So um, let's wrap this up now that we have our own page and we have already set our login or sign in uh, function to navigate to the home page. We have secure our own page by making sure that our it executes the function on load that checks to make sure that the user is authenticated. And we have a sign out menu item, which calls our do sign out function. Um, so I think we are all set. We saw how to protect pages by checking on page load if the user is authenticated. And if they're not, navigating away to some other page that we want them to use to authenticate. We saw how to do page navigation. 
we saw how to clear the store. So it's going to use a sign out that all the information that would have been used to um, identify them is cleared. And we saw how to write a simple own page where you can add anything you essentially want when the user sign in. Like if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much. Appreciate your time and patience. And see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.